Zetar also has its own onboard arpeggiator. It's a little unique in the fact that it only plays the notes that you play. It won't add any notes of its own. It's found in the Utilities Arpeggiator menu. Here, I'll turn it on real quick. Go Utilities, Arpeggiator, and I'll turn it on. Watch, you can get some interesting effects in your playing this way. Just one note. Now you can also adjust the tempo internally by using an onboard pot or a pedal, or you can control it from an external MIDI clock source like a sequencer. The Zetar gives you the opportunity to set up the response and the touch for everything on the instrument. For instance, the string triggers, you're going to want to set those up so that they feel and respond to your picking style just the way that you want so that your synthesizer sounds will give you the feel that you're expecting. The first adjustment that you'll make on the string triggers is with the uh, trim pots in the back and this adjusts the hardware gain for these strings. You'll use an adjustment tool like this or a jeweler's screwdriver and you reach down inside and you can set these trim pots to give the gain for these strings that, that give you the, the response that you want. That's going to be your best adjustment. Also, if those adjustments don't prove to be quite enough, there's a, a screen, the response menu, that allows you to adjust a number of other parameters. There's gain that you can set in software, and you can either drop the gain if your sound is a little bit too bright, or you can raise the gain if the notes aren't coming out quite strong enough. Likewise, you can set a threshold, which sets the lowest note at which your, your touch will respond. Likewise, you can set uh, the curve to give you a really detailed kind of response, and you can use that to set where your highest note comes in and where your lowest note comes in. Likewise, the fingerboard and the pads and the other devices on the instrument, they all have their resp velocity response adjustments as well. So you can set them up just the way you want. In the case of the fingerboard, you can set up uh, a curve for the fingerboard, which is actually settable by zone. So if you're playing two hands, for instance, each hand can, because it has slightly different touch, you can set it up with a different response. Likewise, if you have a different sound on each hand, you can set those up with a different response. Also, the fingerboard has a gain setting. You can set up the gain if you need just a little bit more or you want to reduce it a little bit and also a threshold if you think the notes are coming in a little bit too quickly, more than you like, or if you want to uh, make it more sensitive and you just hear, we want to hear everything and give it the lightest touch possible. Likewise, the pads, if you have them installed on your instrument, those have those adjustments as well. And uh, also the pots, too. If you want a linear curve or a nonlinear curve, those curves are pre-programmed into the instrument. You can just select them. However, if you want to edit anything, you certainly can, and then you can save it out just the way you like it and use that instead. Now I'd like to show you our solo preset. It's a, it's a function that I've preset into the instrument here just to demonstrate some things that you can do with the zoning system. What I've done is I've created uh, several zones on the fingerboard. I've taken the first fret and assigned each one of these keys to its own zone with its own channel, which means it's going to play its own sound, its own voice. And then the rest of the fingerboard I have in this nice electric piano sound. So the way you're going to use this is that you can quickly select a key in a different zone. If you decide you want to solo in that sound, hold that button, hit the solo key. Now you have that sound spread over the entire fingerboard. You solo on that as long as you like, and when you're tired of that, hit the solo button again, and the, and the fingerboard returns to its first configuration. Here's that electric piano again. Likewise, you can pick another sound. Say that bass, hit the solo button. Now you've got that sound spread over the entire fingerboard. 
If you decide you'd like to layer up some of those sounds, this becomes a quick way to mix and match and layer different sounds. So if you like that, that uh, synthy pad and that electric piano, and say the bass all together, select those three notes, hit the solo button. Now you've got all those together. It's kind of fun and offers an awful lot of opportunities for experimentation. We added a special chording system to the Z-Tar. This feature allows you to play an entire chord on a single key. Here, I'll show you. I'll play a note here, a key. Now you can strum the chord, and you don't have to finger the entire thing because all the notes are fingered for you. And then there's different chord families, and there's a lot of ways to do this. Some of these chords are very difficult to finger if you had to play them ordinarily. Now when you program these chords, there's a separate menu for that, a chord generation system, and you can set up a root note and a chord type. There's about 40 different chord types in there, major chords, minor chords, dominant chords with alterations, sustained chords or suspended chords and uh, some other oddball things for your amusement and amazement. When you assign these notes then down to a key, you have the opportunity to assign the chord to a single key, in which case you can go one at a time and create a block of chords in an area for a tune, for instance, that you just, just has what you want. Or you can take that chord and you can cast that chord type chromatically up the string, like this has here. Also, there's hammer-ons available. So you can also put the chording system into the poly mode, just the way you can play more than one note per string when you're playing single notes. You can also play more than one chord at a time for a polychording system, which is an interesting thing to experiment with, particularly if you're setting up chords that you know what you're creating. Like for instance, if I play a chord like this, I'll just play it this way so you can see what I'm doing. And then I layer it up with another similar chord, say up a fourth. That's actually a 12 note chord you're hearing. Zitar is also a lot of fun as a percussion controller. Now, I'm not a drummer, but just to show you the kinds of sounds you can get, I brought up a drum patch on the fingerboard. Then you can set up drum maps. I haven't done this, but when you create a, a group of notes where you have, say, all of your toms grouped together and, you're, and a snare, say, on four keys adjacent, you can get rolls and flams and a lot of things. You can create a kit. It's really a nice thing to do. Well, we've touched on some of the features of the Z-Tar and some of its capabilities. And I hope we've given you an idea of some of the possibilities with the instrument. There's been an awful lot of development that's gone into it over the years. And it hasn't been possible in this short time to go into the depth of programming each of these features. But if you think there's more that you want to learn and more you, that you need to know in order to create the kinds of setups that you want, please feel free to go to our website and you can find the manual and tutorials there and a lot of support information that will help you figure out what it is you're trying to achieve in MIDI and your musical future. Thanks so much for watching.